Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I am your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they so want, need, and desire by supplying them with the easy tips and tools for them to implement within their relationship. So today we're actually going to talk about if you should actually go see a counselor, whether your man or your girl wants to go with you or not. Stay tuned. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So before we get started with this one, if you are seeing this video for the first time and you have not watched the other two videos within this series, then definitely go ahead and check those videos out after this one. And the first video within the series is when you should choose to go see a counselor and why it's a good thing. And then the second video is how you choose the right counselor for you. And so today we're gonna focus on should you go see a counselor even if your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, fiance does not want to go with you. There are six things for you to think about. The very first thing to think about is you don't have to censor yourself once you get there. I know a lot of times we want to say things and we have to figure out, should I say it this way? Are they going to get offended? You know, maybe I should clean it up. And you don't have to do that when you go to counseling by yourself. You are able to open up and pour out your heart and just say it how you feel that it can be said without any judgment or your spouse over there rolling their dog on eyes or jumping in and trying to cut you off. You get to open up and say what you need to say without censoring it. The second thing to think about is that you can actually practice with your counselor on how to approach the tough conversations that you need to have with your spouse so they can actually they can show you actively show you that you can approach the situation like this and then you can practice it with him or with her the third thing to think about is that you can actually get a better understanding of what the what a healthy relationship looks like and it sounds like because there is no animosity there when you are there with the counselor or the therapist. You're there just opening up and being you and the counselor is just listening to you and you feel heard, you feel understood. And because of that, the way that you and your counselor are talking and speaking to one another, you can see that this is the way that a healthy relationship should unfold. And yes, it's completely different because you don't have any emotional ties with your counselor. However, you can still get a picture of if you can be sane and calm with somebody outside of your spouse, trust me, you can be sane and calm when you are with your spouse as well. It's going to take some practice, especially if you guys have been very toxic toward one another. It's going to take some practice. And it might even be hard to do. You might even find yourself messing up. But you have to continue to practice and get better each and every time. So you'll get to see what a healthy relationship looks like and sounds like. The fourth thing to think about is that when you are there, I kind of mentioned this before, but when you are there with the counselor, you don't have to worry about an argument ensuing because your spouse is not listening or they're taking something the wrong way or they just want to interject to get the um, hot topic off of them or the hot conversation off of them. So they're trying to flip everything onto you. You don't have to worry about any of that happening if you go to counseling by yourself. And actually, in most cases, when you feel that you need to go to counseling, you really need to do the dual counseling. What I mean by that is you actually should be going to counseling by yourself. But then you also, if your partner would go to counseling with you, you should be doing that way as well. So really, you should be going by yourself, whether or not your spouse is going with you. And if at all possible, if your spouse was to go with you, it could be the same therapist, could be the same counselor, or it could be somebody completely different. Because just because you mess well with that counselor doesn't mean that your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your fiance is going to mesh well with the same with the same counselor. So you might have to do the process all over again. You might have to go out there and find another counselor for you and your spouse. That's okay. If you are determined to make this thing work 
and you both are actively like, okay, I want to make it work. I want to make it work, but it's still breaking down. You still have a chance to get these things together. You do You have a chance. The fifth thing to think about is that when your partner starts to see the positive change on a consistent basis, they'll be more inclined to think about going with you because they'll see that you are very serious about being positive, about not being disrespectful, about, you know, being very loving and being uh, and, and, and showing the love and being caring and being very caring towards them. Even if they're being a jerk, even if they're being an asshole. Number six, the last and final thing to think about is when you go to counseling by yourself. Change will occur and can occur starting with you. Starting with the one person, because most people think that change will happen and you'll be happier when your partner changes. But really, the change that you are seeking and looking for has to start within yourself first. Because one person can absolutely bring about the positive change that you want to see in your relationship. Yes, it will take a little longer. Yes, you will be frustrated at times, but trust me, trust me, your partner will break down and start to be more loving towards you, more respectful of you, and appreciate you even more because you did not give up on them. It's so many, so many things to think about in a relationship and everybody is not going to go through all of these things in their relationship. But there are so many things to think about and so many things to deal with. And some of them, should I say most of them, we don't know about until we say I do. Because a lot of times people will hold on and hide the real person until after you get married to them. And all of the things that used to bug you about your boyfriend or about your fiance will exponentially bug you when you guys get married because there is nowhere to go meaning you guys are in the same household all the time unless you unless one of you guys travel right you, but you get what I'm saying you guys are around each other all the time you're interacting all the time if they leave if the guy leaves up the toilet seat and you fall in it a couple times right or if they leave the toothpaste cap off it or if they don't make up the bed or if they leave the dishes in the sink lots of things to think about when you guys really start to intertwine and merge your worlds together but I don't want to be daunting. It can be a beautiful thing. It really can. It can be a beautiful thing, especially if you both want it to be beautiful and you're both actively working on the relationship. I'll see you guys in the final video of the series where we talk about the stigmas of going to see a counselor or therapist. Deuces.